Ends in the name of the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister. In light of his comment that, quote, borrowing $300 million a week is unaffordable and is holding the economy back, end quote, how much on average has his government borrowed each week during the current financial year. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. M Mr Speaker, the Government's bond programme for this year was recently extended to £20 billion. Uh, This is more than is required for the year, but DMO is front-loading some of the borrowing to take advantage of favourable market conditions. On a weekly basis, that averages out to new debt of £380 million a week. Uh, that sort of increase in debt is absolutely unaffordable, and I'm glad the Member now sees that. The Honourable Sup Leader of the Opposition. Sup uh, supplementary question, Mr Speaker. If borrowing $380 million a week is, as he's just said, absolutely unaffordable, how can he afford to spend $44 million a week or $2.5 billion a year in giving tax cuts to the wealthiest 10 per cent of our country? The Right Honourable Prime uh, Minister. Mr Speaker, um, if we were, that would be unaffordable, but we're not. Um, the Government has made a number of tax changes since coming into Government, but taking as a whole, Nationals' tax changes are in fact reducing the government's uh, deficit compared to the situation we inherited in 2008. Without these changes, the deficit next year would be almost uh, $1 billion worse. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Sup supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Will his cuts to home care, which hurt frail elderly people trying to live independently, in their own homes significantly reduce that $380 million borrowing a week. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Yeah, well, uh, what I can say is the Government has been working very hard to take the rough edges off the recession. It's one of the reasons why we have actually run such a large deficit. But what I can say, Mr Speaker, is when uh, members opposite get to see the budget next week, they'll realise what great progress the Government is making in getting the, go the country back into surplus so that we have to borrow less. And I look forward to Labor producing their alternative budget, which will show us having a debt profile similar to Greece, I would have thought. Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Order, a uh, point of order has been called. Uh, Mr Speaker, it was a specific question. It was relatively short. It was to the point, and it had to do with home care spending and the effect of that uh, on the amount of borrowing. Uh, there was a a lovely general statement about the budget and, and about the opposition, order. but sir, nothing order. that order. addressed the question. Order. I, I, I accept the, the basic thrust of what the member is saying. The dilemma that I have as Speaker is when members incorporate into a question a supposed statement of fact, then it does give, instead of asking for the information, where members actually insert a statement into the question, as was inserted into that question about some alleged cuts to some program or other, it gives, the, it gives the minister answering a lot more leeway. If the question just asks a straight question, then it gives the minister less leeway. I can be of far more assistance to members if they don't insert statements into questions. But where statements alleging, if it's a primary question, it's been validated. A supplementary question hasn't been validated. And so ministers have a, a fair bit of licence under those circumstances. But I'll be listening very carefully because I, uh, the Prime Minister, I accept, was on the, you know, was on the edges of that one. But I, I, don't, I, I do want to hear questions that ask questions rather than insert statements. The facts should be in the primary question and then the quest supplementary questions should should respond to the answers given by the Ministers. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Have cuts of up to 80 per cent to adult and community education and pushing up the fees on parents for early childhood education significantly reduced his $380 million borrowing each week? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, all savings the Government makes helps in the current financial position we're in. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, if all savings help the Government's position, has the Prime Minister considered not installing the $1,000 seat warmers in his BMWs, and has he considered requiring of his Minister of Foreign Affairs that he takes a $4,000 commercial flight and not a $75,000 Air Force flight? 
the right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, um, Mr. Speaker, in terms of the use of the Air Force by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, from time to time that will make sense uh, because of the diary that he runs. But I have said to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, when it comes to jumping out of planes, none of that. We don't want that. Phil Goff tried that stunt and there was nothing in it for the taxpayer. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker. Order. Now, order. I apologise, Leader the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Colleagues, we must be able to hear what is going on. I accept there's a fair bit of uh, passion in some of these questions and answers, but we want to be able to hear. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, does the Prime Minister agree that the flight to Vanuatu cost the taxpayer $71,000 more than it needed to, but the flight to do the, air, the parachute jump cost nothing because it was on a routine special air service parachute jump? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, that is a bit rich coming from Labour. This was a routine flight with Phil Goff as Minister of Defence. Well, all I can say to the member, Mr Speaker, is he shouldn't do this sort of stunt now because I tell you what, if, it, if the parachute was packed by the Labour Party caucus, it would be a very interesting jump. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker. Sorry, Sorry. Question, Mr. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Order. Order. When the seals stop performing, I'll ask my question. Order. Now look, I'm on my feet and some members of the House will come to order. The House has a bit of fun, but it's time to settle down. When I'm on my feet, there will be silence or members will be leaving. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition, I'm should knows he shouldn't make statements like that, but then I accept the provocation as well. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, how can New Zealand afford to borrow to pay for his $2.5 billion uh, tax cuts for the wealthiest 10% each year, but he can't afford to invest in the Cullen Superannuation Fund, which this year produced a rate of return of over 23%, on average over 8% and has reduced his deficit by some billions of dollars. The right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, Mr Speaker, all I can say is thank goodness Phil Goff isn't the Minister of Finance because this is the table that quite clearly shows... Point of order, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, I think it's clear to you that that was not even beginning to address my question. Now order. Now I meant what I said about the House coming to order. And if uh, I realise there's a lot of disorder around the House, and I happen to pick on the wrong person to leave, it'll be a bit unfortunate. But I won't tolerate more of this. And uh, you know, I, I think it would be more helpful for an answer not to start that way. I, I invite the Right Honourable Prime Minister to answer the question. The Honourable Right Honourable Speaker, Prime Minister. Uh, when the government introduced its tax cuts, which were across the board, it made a number of changes. It increased taxes in certain parts and it reduced them in others. And, Mr Speaker, what that showed was by 2014, Mr Speaker, by 2014 the deficit was actually reduced by over a billion dollars. Question number two, Craig Foss.